Hi, welcome to this Corporate Maths video. In this video, we're going to look at the video solutions to the Corporate Maths practice questions on comparing distributions. If you need any extra help on comparing distributions, if you go to Corporate Maths and go to the videos and worksheets section and scroll down to video number 57C, there's a dedicated video tutorial there on comparing distributions. Alternatively, you could scan this QR code. But in this video, we're going to focus on the video solutions to the practice questions, so let's get started. Okay, so here's question number one. Question number one says, here's some data about the visitors to a golf club. And some of the visitors are members of the golf club and some of them are not members or non-members. And we've got this table and we've got for the members, the mean age is 50.7 years old and the range of the ages is 81 years. And for the non-members, the mean age is 34.1 years and the range of the ages is 82 years. And the question says to compare the data for the members and the non-members and we're to make two comparisons. Okay, so let's have a look at this table first of all. So whenever I'm looking at this table, I can see we've got members and non-members. And if we look at the mean age, that's the mean age, the average age of the members and the non-members. So for the members, their mean age is 50.7 years. So that's 50.7, so nearly 51 years old. And for the non-members, it's 34.1 or 34 years old, roughly. So as you can see here, the mean age for the members is much older than the mean age for the non-members. So that's one of our comparison, that the members are older than the non-members because their average or the mean age is much higher. And then if we look at the ranges, remember that's the difference between the youngest and the oldest, or if you take the oldest one and take away the youngest age, that's the range. So the range of the ages, they're very close together, 81 years and 82 years. So you've obviously got someone who's quite old, and then you've taken away someone who's quite young, and you've got a range of the ages, which is 81 for the members, and 82 years for the non-members. So they're very close together. So that's two comparisons. The two comparisons that I'm going to say are, the mean age for the members is much older than the mean age for the non-members, so the members are older on average. Average. And in terms of the range or the spread of the data, they're actually quite similar, but they're very close together. So in terms of the comparisons, the first one that I've said is the average or the mean age of the members is greater than the mean age of the non-members, as the mean age for the members is 50.7 years old compared to 34.1 years old for the non-members. So that's our first comparison. In terms of the next comparison that I've written is the spread of the ages is quite similar for the members and non-members because the ranges are very close together, 81 years and 82 years. Now, ideally, I'd probably look at something called the interquartile range to get a better indication of the spread but th in terms of this question all we've been given is the ranges and because they're very close together we can just say the spread of the ages are quite similar and that's it so they're the two comparisons that I've made obviously the members are much older than the non-members and the spread if we look at the ranges are very similar together okay let's look at our next question question number two so question number two says, Miss Jackson gave her class a test. She gives her class a test, and here's some data about the number of hours spent revising and the test results. So she's obviously asked the class who spent less than 10 hours revising and who spent 10 or more hours revising. And then she's compared the results for those students who revised less than 10 hours and the students that are revised for 10 or more hours. And here, if we have a look here, the mean result, so the mean result, the average, for the group of students that are revised for less than 10 hours is 48.8, compared to those students that are revised for longer, 10 or more hours, is 63.4. So as you can see, the students that are revised longer got a higher mean, so their results were better. And then in terms of the range of the results, so the spread, the range for the students who revised for less than 10 hours is actually higher than the students who revised for 10 or more hours of revision. So that means that the students that are revised for less than 10 hours, their results are more spread out. And whereas the results for the students that revise for 10 or more hours are more consistent, they're closer together. And we've been asked to make two comparisons. So the two comparisons that I've written are, so the first comparison that I made was that the students who revise for 10 or more hours performed better on average than the students who revise for less than 10 hours, as the mean result for the students who revise for 10 or more hours was 63.4 compared to 48.8. So obviously they performed better than the students who revised for less time. And then comparison number two, the results for the students who revised for less than 10 hours was more spread out. They were less consistent as their range was 57 compared to 31 for the students who revised for 10 or more hours. So the students who revised for 10 or more hours, their results were more consistent, closer together than the students who revised for less than 10 hours. And that's it. That's the two comparisons that I made. So question number three says, here's some data about the time taken for free restaurants to deliver meals to their customers one evening. So there's free restaurants and they must do deliveries to customers. You've got Burger World, you've got Chips R Us, and we've got Pizza Time. And we've got the mean delivery time in minutes. So for Burger World, their mean delivery time was 25.4 minutes. Chips R Us was 27.1 minutes. And Pizza 
answer time was a bit longer. It was 48.1 minutes. And then in terms of the range, that's how spread out the delivery times are. For Burger World and Chips or Us, they're 7.8 and 7.2 minutes. So actually not that far apart. So, so in terms of the delivery times, they're quite close together because the range is quite low. So perhaps it's maybe as low as maybe 21 minutes and as high as 28 point something. So they're quite close together in terms of the delivery times. Whereas Pizza Time, their range is much greater. It's 33.5 minutes. So the difference between the quickest delivery time and the slowest delivery time is 33.5 minutes. And we've been asked to compare the mean delivery times. So as you can see here, Burger World and Chips R Us deliver much quicker than Pizza Time. Maybe Pizza Time need to spend a little bit longer making their pizzas, but perhaps they're really good quality. So maybe they're worth the wait. But in terms of just the delivery times, Pizza Time's much slower than the other two. So let's explain that. Pizza time was much slower on average to deliver than Burger World and Chips R Us as their mean delivery time was 48.1 minutes compared to 25.4 minutes and 27.1 minutes. And then we've been asked to compare the range of the delivery times. So this is how spread out the delivery times are. And again, the pizza time delivery times are much more spread out than the other two. So let's explain that. So the spread of the delivery times for pizza time was much greater than Burger World and Chips R Us as their range of 33. Five minutes is much greater than the other ranges of 7.2 and 7.8 minutes and that's it okay let's look at our next question question number four so question number four says a talent competition is held for performers and some of the performers are singers and the rest are dancers and each performer is awarded a score out of 10 so they're given a score or a mark out of 10 and the table shows the data about the scores so we've got the singers and the dancers and we've got the 68 percent of the performers are singers and the 32 percent are dancers and the mean score for the singers is 8.1 out of 10 and the mean score for the dancers is 6.2 out of 10 and the range of the scores for the singers is 1.5 and for the dancers is 3.2 and part a says compare the proportion of performers that are singers and that are dancers so if we have a look here the percentage of the performers that are singers is 68 percent but the percentage of the performers that are dancers are 32 percent so there's a much greater proportion of the performers that are singers than dancers so let's explain that the majority of the performers were singers as 68 percent of the performers were singers and only 32 percent of the performers were dancers and that's it okay part b Part B says to compare the average scores. So we want to compare the mean scores, the scores that they obtained. So if we have a look here, the scores, the mean score for the singers is 8.1, but the mean score for the dancers is only 6.2. So the singers perform better than the dancers. So let's explain that. So on average, the singers scored better than the dancers because the mean score for the singers was 8.1 compared to the mean score for the dancers of 6.2. So the singers perform better than the dancers. And that's it. Okay, and then part C. Part C says compare the spread of the scores. So if we have a look at the spread of the scores, well, let's look at the range. That tells us how spread out the scores are. The range for the singers was 1.5, but the range for the dancers was 3.2. That means the scores are more spread out for the dancers than the singers. So let's explain that. So the scores for the dancers are more spread out as their range of 3.2 is more than double the range of the singers, which was 1.5. And that's it. Okay, let's have a look at our next question. Okay, so our next question, question number five. Question number five says, a company has produced two television adverts and the company surveys a large number of people about their preferred advertisement. And here are their findings. So there's two adverts, advert A and advert B. And the percentage of people that preferred advert A was 19%. And the percentage of people that preferred advert B was 81%. So much more of the people preferred advert B than advert A. In terms of the mean age, the mean age of the people that preferred advert A was 58.4 years old. So older people perhaps preferred advert A than advert B because the mean age of the people that preferred advert B was 26.1 years old. And then in terms of the range, how spread out the ages were, the range of the ages for the people that preferred advert A was 41 years. So they're but more spread out than the people that preferred advert B, which had a range of 25 years. And then the question says, compare the data for the people who preferred advert A with the people that preferred advert B. So let's compare them. And we've been asked to make three comparisons. So let's compare the number of people or the proportion of people that preferred advert A and advert B. So, so a greater proportion of people preferred advert B. Let's compare the meaning ages of the people that preferred each advert so the mean age for the people that preferred advert a was much greater than the people that preferred advert b so older people preferred advert a than advert b and then in terms of the ranges the range is greater for the people that preferred advert a than advert b so we can say that the people that preferred advert a their ages are more spread out than the people that preferred advert b so let's explain those so the majority of people preferred advert b than advert a 
The ages of the people who preferred advert A, the mean age was 58.4, was much higher than those who preferred advert B because their mean age was 26.1 years old. And then the third comparison is the ages of the people who preferred advert A, which has a range of 41, are more spread out than those who preferred advert B because their range was only 25. And that's it. And that's it. So these have been the video solutions to the corporate maths practice questions on comparing distributions. I really hope you found this video useful. If you have found it useful, please like it and please subscribe to the YouTube channel. Thank you. Cheers. Bye.